Hello critters. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today I want to talk about growing your platform. I didn't really know how to make a video on this and I've mentioned it a few times in the past about like how doing trends and drawing what you think people will want to see will only get you so far and I really mean it. And I've just seen so much in the art community lately around this, especially geared towards like younger artists that I just needed to make a video on it because I felt like I was going to explode. So let's get into it. So I've had enough. <laughs> I need the art community to be more positive and self-loving right now or I'm going to have a hernia. But it's okay. I'm lowering my blood pressure. I'm fine. Don't worry. In this video, I'm going to be giving a few tips I've learned and seen on how to like actually grow your platform in a sustainable way, as well as addressing the weird attitude that the art community, especially as of late, has had towards fame and clout. And I'm going to also be talking about the mental health side a little because I have a lot to say and I feel like it's not discussed very much, you know? I don't know if that's just me. But before I start, I really want you to take a moment and think about why you want to grow your platform. I, I mean, there's like many reasons for it and I'm not saying some are more valid than others, of course, but different reasons might also dictate how you go about it. For one, do you want to have more people see your art and content in terms of sharing your love for your content? Or do you want to monetize your content and build a career off of it? Or some combination, as I feel like a lot of people have. Because let's be real, it's a lot of artists' dream to do art as a living, and I feel like an obsession towards numbers is a large part in trying to make it. But I will talk about that later. Moving on, though. So my first point. Consistency versus burnout. This is a very major part of playing the game of the algorithm that I feel like isn't examined enough in terms of how to actually game the algorithm in a way that won't destroy your mental health and your love for doing art. So let's do a little math or something. It's not really math, but I want to analyze exactly what consistency does for the algorithm and why it's important before we get into it a little more. So it's no secret that the algorithm on most websites plays a lot into how much engagement your content gets. The algorithm picking up your post can be the difference in tens to thousands to tens of thousands of engagements, which like kind of sucks for trying to start as an artist. But here's the thing. A lot of it is based on luck. And I know that's horrible to hear, but if a hundred amazing artists were to start new accounts and all were to post similar content at the same time, Maybe only a handful of those would reach anyone, just fully based on how many people are online at the moment, how many people are clicking on those tags, how many impressions you get within the first minute, etc. And these are things that you can't control and are very difficult to kind of control, I guess. <laughs> you can do things that are eye-catching, draw popular fandoms, etc. to have people look at your content for just a second longer, but even then, it is mostly out of your control, which is when consistency comes into play. Think about it as putting your name into a raffle. If you add your name a few more times, then you have a greater chance of getting picked, so theoretically, the more you post, the more chance you have for a post of yours to get picked up by the algorithm. This also goes hand in hand with how I think some algorithms show your content to more people if you're active or have been posting consistently, so posting on a regular schedule is a way to almost game the system. And of course, I mean, disclaimer, don't spam post because I think the algorithm doesn't like when you post like 10 times in a day because they're like, what the hell are you doing? But anyways, this doesn't mean you'll gain a huge following quickly, however, it can still take Take a while to gain a following this way, but even in having a consistency, those who do follow your account will recognize you posting consistently, which also helps to grow recognition. Now, with all of this in mind, it may seem like a good idea to post consistently art that you might personally not be invested in, but believe the wider audience will be. This is where I'm going to poke a bit at some shit I've been seeing in the wider art community about gaining clout, quote unquote. The reason I started making this video in the first place is because I kept seeing large accounts telling their audiences that the way to grow their account is to fit into the mold that they set, drawing in a specific way, drawing specific things to trick the algorithm into giving you tons of likes or whatever, mainly targeted towards the artists starting out their art journeys, especially in younger artists in general, which just makes my blood boil. I, I don't know if this is me, but anyways, fitting into the mold of an art influencer is only going to get you so far, plain and simple, and I'll get more into that in a later section as well, but in the meantime, when it comes to consistency, here's the real kicker. You're going to burn yourself the hell out if you draw a ton of stuff that you don't want to, especially if you're not getting the amount of engagement that you expect from it. Drawing art without the love of what you're creating is going to burn you out, as your motivation to do it will be low as you force yourself through the motions. 
This paired with consistency in a triad with the fact that it could take months or years for your account to even receive the attention that these large influencers have and promise you will lead to you growing to resent working on art, which of course then makes your consistency go way down if you burn yourself out too much that you can't draw. Even with going by all these tricks to gain fast following by large artists, there's also a bias in the artists that you do see giving you this advice. These are artists that have large followings that are favored by the algorithm, and the large majority of artists that don't make it to that large of a following won't have their own art journeys heard. Not to even mention the toll that this can all take on your mental health. I feel like a lot of artists, including myself, draws a very personal emotional passion. It's something that could be an escape, a way of communicating, a coping mechanism, some combination, or more. If your love for art dies as you don't get the response that you think will help Help your art career and you don't find the same joy in art that you did before, the effect on your mental health can be bad, <laughs> you know? Rant over though. I got a little heated at that, I'm sorry, but anyways, how do we post consistently without burning ourselves out? That's a question. <laughs> anyways, first of all, I know I said consistency is incredibly important, but a disclaimer is that if you do start burning yourself out, you need to take a step back and reassess how to stop that burnout before you can't draw for an even longer period of time. Here's my greatest tip I can pass on to you, so listen closely. This is something that I hold very close to my heart and I want you to really take in. Draw what you want. Now, of course, this isn't really taking into account all of the algorithm impression BS of how finished work will get more engagement, popular fandom work will get more engagement, etc. But hear me out. Draw what you want to, what you're passionate about, and what makes you happy. First of all, it will shine through in your art that you enjoyed making a piece, even subconsciously. I know that's cheesy, but I swear by it. Drawing what you're passionate about as well, be it a project, OCs, a fandom you're super hyper fixated on, these things will give you the motivation to draw and post consistently, as it gives you that extra love and excitement towards sharing your work as well as creating it. If you're able to post consistently the things that you love creating, that's the real jackpot of tricking the algorithm, as you can really take your love for making art and turn that into more chances for the algorithm to pick it up. I don't know, that might all be a hot take, but that's something I really feel strongly about. So long story short, post consistently, Letting what you love drawing guide you rather than grinding art that you think will make you fit into some arbitrary art influencer mold. And that leads me to my next point anyways. So my second point, originality and community. So I know that originality is a scary thing to talk about in the art community because there's so much stuff about like art style and art style theft and finding an original art style, etc, etc. Which is very stressful, but like, I'm not here to say you gotta invent the wheel when it comes to your art style. Hell, you can draw however you want, even if it looks like another art style that you like, as long as you're drawing what you want it to look like and can continue on your art journey in a way that is personal to you. No artist is exactly the same, no matter how similar two art styles might be, as every artist has had their own journey to get to that point and inspiration slash motivations behind the exact way that they draw. So don't worry about all that. What I mean is that you want to build a brand, I guess, in a not scary way, you know? <laughs> By this, I mean something that I think is important is that when someone sees your art on their feed when they follow you, they're able to go, oh, so-and-so posted, cool, without looking at the name. It's about people being excited to see your content, wanting to engage when you post. This goes hand in hand with building a community around your art, which may seem like a daunting thing, but can really come in the form of having people recognize your OCs that you're excited about, or talking to people about the fandom that you're really into. That excitement and love for art and content is going to garner a positive space that people will want to interact in. Not to be sappy, but positivity can go a really long way. If you treat your community like it's just a bunch of numbers in a game, then you'll lack that extra oomph to give you a real sustainable following. Being the final form, the ultimate goal, having people follow you and your art for you and your art. Art can't exist without the artist, which <laughs> AI can go suck a dick. And having a sustainable following means that your following likes you and your art for, again, you and your art. That people are going to seek out your art to see if you've posted. That people are going to send your art around, share your art, because that human connection within it is a thread that keeps us all together, that binds people to your art. Okay, again, I'm getting sappy, but I really mean it. This is definitely a more abstract point of mine, but being yourself and authentic in your art is something that's really important to gaining a following, as people can really tell, even subconsciously. Even in that vein, yes, your art can blow up at any moment by hitting the algorithm with a miracle, but that will only get you so far. You as an artist and in your art journey will be what leads to an organic and sustainable presence. Not to mention, when it comes to an art career, having recognizable art and people who see you for your art will get you much further than drawing how you think will get you a following, because that's just like putting an autofill resume into a job application with thousands of applicants, you know? If that makes any sense? Anyways, moving on. My final and third point is... <laughs> Please stop with the self-deprecation and attitude toward burning yourself out for clout that seems to be really popular in the art community, and I mean it. So maybe this is a little less about growing your account and more about your mental health, but as I mentioned earlier, this all ties into it. 
If you're unable to continue creating art because you've burnt yourself out, that's just going to get you nowhere in general. I'm going to give you a little more advice from the heart, and this is something I truly believe every artist needs to hear, especially those early in their art journey trying to figure out exactly what it is they want to do with their art. Engagement isn't going to bring you happiness. Clout isn't going to bring you happiness. I know a ton of people are going to say that engagement makes them feel good about their art, and that's totally valid. Having people see your art and like it and comment is a really good feeling, and I'm not diminishing that being like, you shouldn't care about that at all, like a lot of people say, but also like, seeking those things out of the basis to your art journey and embracing the clout goblin aesthetic in persona is going to hurt you. If this is your mindset, no matter how many likes you get, it's not going to be enough. Not to mention, engagement waxes and wanes. There will be times, even if you have an absolutely massive account, that you'll just have some flops in a row. And if you're not used to that, if you're in a mindset that you did everything for clout, that's going to actually affect your mental health and your attitude towards your art. It's going to affect the way you look at your art. It's going to make you second guess yourself. It's going to make you resent. Not to be the jaded old grandpa that I am, but it happened to me. I didn't even realize that it was. I wasn't even that far into the clout mindset. I wanted to grow my account as much as I could by posting every day, which I did for nearly 600 days. <laughs> it was a lot. And even that wasn't enough. I would see the posts that I really enjoyed making would get less engagement, and so I was doubting myself and cornered myself into making art that I knew would get engagement, even if it felt like a chore, even if I didn't have the time to draw what I wanted anymore. And even then, the algorithm wanes, and it's never going to be enough. I stopped enjoying making art, which was always my major outlet due to my mental illness. And without that outlet, I only became more stressed, and as I stopped drawing, the idea of returning to art became more and more daunting as literal months passed. So don't be like that. <laughs> even as someone who grew up on social media, probably not as much as most people these days, even as someone who has been used to having a somewhat engaged following, it overtook me. And with that, I feel like a lot of people, including myself back then, aren't really equipped to deal with the very real effects that the hunger for social media engagement can have on your mental health. And of course I'm going to take a step back as well and say that there are many larger issues in the world than social media engagement and shit like that, but instead of saying that you should worry about greater things and being dismissive of it, don't let something that you enjoy become just another stressor in an already difficult world. Your art is what you make it, and so is your art journey. And so is your presence on social media. Overall, your attitude towards your art is something that we all need to look inside ourselves and address, examine, and figure out exactly what we're looking for. And of course, quick note, I totally understand the whole art career thing. I could probably make a video on art monetization eventually because I've learned a lot about it. But I understand the art career thing a lot because I'm not someone who grew up with money and I still don't have money. <laughs> it's always a struggle, especially in today's economy and job market, and art can be seen as a way of survival for some. My quick point here that I just want to give is that engagement on your art doesn't necessarily mean you can monetize it. There are so many factors that go into it. I know so many people who make it comfortably as a full-time artist with the smallest fraction of a following of those who can barely scrape by with their art career and two jobs. So hopefully that brings some comfort. <laughs> I don't know, but please consider that when looking at your art as a potential income source because it's a lot more complicated than just numbers. But that's about it. Sorry if I was a little all over the place as I always am. I hope this helped in some sense, but I mostly just wanted to like address the weird attitudes towards clout I've seen everywhere recently and try to like fight back against that because I think it's actually really harmful, especially to impressionable audiences of very large accounts. Ha 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 ha. I'm fine. <laughs> Anyways, I believe in you all. And I want you all to believe in yourselves. I just want people to realize that you can make art and enjoy making art and have your love for art continue and that won't diminish trying to grow your art accounts, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense, but I believe in you, okay? Um, <laughs> anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, etc. I'm sorry I've been gone for a while, I got busy and a little scared of posting because I got a bunch of new subscribers. Um, hi everyone, I'm, I'm really shy, <laughs> okay? Yeah, I've just, just been super busy, but anyways, uh, <laughs> let me know how y'all have been. I am hoping to post more soon. I got super into One Piece since last time I posted, so tell me your opinions. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see y'all in the next video. Um, bye.